Kylian Mbappé's arrival on a free transfer after leaving Paris Saint-Germain is both a huge coup and a massive relief for Real Madrid. All the most important planning at Madrid in recent years, transfer policy, the 1.7 billion euro stadium renovation, the European Super League project, has taken place at the understanding that Mbappé would sooner or later end up at the Santiago Bernabeu. Many figures inside and around the club have described it as an obsession for Madrid's all-powerful president, Florentino Perez. This was no secret project undertaken behind the scenes. Madrid fans were constantly fed the idea via the local sports team that Mbappé was close to joining a team he had longed to play for since he was a boy. Kylian Mbappé Lotin was born on the 20th of December 1998, six months after France had conquered the world at the 1998 World Cup. Mbappé was born in Paris, France, to parents Wilfried Mbappé from Cameroon and Faiz Alamari Mbappé from Algeria. Kylian Mbappé and his family lived just outside of Paris in Bondi, known for its large working class families, where he began playing football at age 6 under Antonio Riccardi. The first time I coached him was when he was 6 years old. You could tell he was different. Kylian could do much more than the other children. His dribbling was already fantastic and he was much faster than the others. He was the best player I've ever seen in 15 years coaching here. In Paris, there are many talents, but I'd never seen a talent like him. After impressing at AS Bondi, Mbappé moved to Clairefontaine Academy, an academy for the best young players in France. The academy is one of the 13 elite academies located in and around France that are supervised by the French Football Federation and has produced the likes of Nicolas Anelka, Olivier Giroud, Blaise Matuidi and Thierry Henry. Whilst at the academy, Mbappé was drawing attention from some of the biggest clubs in the world, with Real Madrid, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City and Bayern Munich all attempting to sign the youngster, and by age 11 he had been invited to train with Real Madrid. Three years later he travelled to London to play a match with Chelsea's youth team, but ultimately settled at AS Monaco for the 2015-2016 season, with them presenting a clear path for Mbappé into the first team. The first time I met him was during a game between Toulouse and Monaco, a game in the under-19 category when he was only 16 years old. West Ham United's former Toulouse defender Issa Diop tells goal. My first feeling when I met him was just to ask myself, who is this phenomenon? That year he started the season with the under-19 team. In the first five games of the season he scored five doubles. He then went up to the Monaco second team and then the first team in the space of a few weeks. When Monaco handed him his senior debut as a late substitute against Cayenne on December 2, 2015, Mbappé was just 16 years old and 347 days old, beating Thierry Henry's club record. His father, Wilfried, told Le Parisien, Kylian still has a room at the training ground, even though he has the means to afford the villa with an accompanying swimming pool. But that's not his thing. He has seen how other players have lost their way and I convinced him to stay at the training complex to protect him. After 14 first team appearances in 2015-2016, he was called up for Francis Tilt at the Under-19 European Championship the following summer and Diop got to know Mbappé more personally. And while he agrees there was a steely focus about his football, Diop says that Kylian was in no way aloof around his teammates. He always had the same behavior. He was very comfortable, very natural. But don't believe that he was a wild child. He likes to pull people's legs and he is always happy in the dressing room, Diop explains. He laughs with everyone, he makes fun of others, he provides a great atmosphere in the dressing room. He is very serious as soon as the ball is on the field, but in life he is not so calm. That tournament would provide Mbappé with his first piece of national glory, with France overcoming an opening group loss to England to win the competition with a 4-0 beating of Italy in the final. Kylian chipped in with 5 goals, including a match-winning double against Germany in the semi-final. And to Diop, it was already clear just how focused his teammate was in his desire to win everything he could. He didn't specify the World Cup or anything. He just always told us that he wanted to win everything. By 2017, he had outgrown Monaco. For all that the club is based in one of the richest areas in the world, its minuscule stadium capacity and secondary status in the eyes of the world were not keeping up with the newfound stature of the forward. His next move was to return home to Paris, joining PSG for an initial 145 million euros fee, rising to 180 million. 
But if it weren't for Neymar's 222 million euros arrival at the Parc des Princes earlier the same summer, it would have smashed the world record for a footballer. The splash made on the transfer market was nothing compared to the reactions he was about to cause on the world stage. After backing up his 2017 League One title at Monaco with a first with PSG, he was headed off to Russia donning the France number 10 shirt which 20 years earlier had been immortalized by Zinedine Zidane's World Cup winning double in his final against Brazil. But he did nothing to damage the legacy. After a goal against Peru and that stunning performance against Argentina, Mbappé and France found themselves in another final, this time against Croatia in Moscow. There he displayed just another of the strings to his bow. Given time and space by the Croatian defense, he hammered home the clinching fourth French goal with barely any backlift and no little finesse. With that, he was the first teenager to score in a World Cup final since Pelé in 1958, and the Brazilian legend was quick to congratulate him. A world champion and two-time league winner already, Mbappé is now looking to add Champions League glory to the list of outstanding achievements before he even reaches the legal drinking age in some countries. Not that stuff like that would bother him, according to the PSG boss Thomas Tuchel. When the German took the job that summer, one of his first acts was to befriend the owners of some of the French capital's most exclusive nightclubs, in a bid to keep a lead on any partying culture amongst his squad. He knew better than to worry about Mbappé. Mbappé is better than other kids because he spends his time watching games on TV while others prefer to go clubbing and wasting money, Tuchel told media. It's true that he remains as grounded as ever. He donated his World Cup earnings of around 400,000 euros to a charity teaching sports to sick and disabled children. It does not change my life, but it changes theirs, he insisted. Even his trademark goal celebration is in homage to his younger brother, Ethan who would use the hands under armpits routine whenever he beat his famous elder sibling on the FIFA video games. There is just so much to admire about Kylian Mbappé, not least of which is the promise of what comes next. While Ronaldo and Messi have dominated the individual accolades of recent years, Mbappé is widely tipped to be one of the consistent prominent figures of the sport for some time ahead. Everything has gone as prescribed so far for Mbappé. I know what I want to do, where I want to go and I won't let anything disturb me. Well, nothing has stopped him so far, and PSG are set to reap the benefits every bit as much as France already has. Among players of his age, he is without doubt the most promising in the world due to his immense technical, physical and mental qualities, boasted PSG president Nasser al khelaifi when Mbappé signed with the Capital Club. Since his emergence at the highest level, he has earned an excellent reputation as a young talent who is very respectful, open, ambitious and already very mature, an 180 million footballer, a World Cup winner, a back-to-back -back League One champion with first Monaco and then PSG. The subject of a cover spread in Time magazine. For the large majority of professional footballers, such a collection of achievements would be more than enough to satisfy them over the entirety of a whole career. When Mbappé joined PSG from Monaco for 180 million euros, he said that his objective was to write history in France, in the capital, in my country, in my city. He's unquestionably realized that aim. And yet, Mbappé, just like Neymar and Messi before him, hasn't achieved what he was acquired to do, lead PSG to a first Champions League title. There is no getting away from the fact that PSG paid more than 400 million euros to sign both Mbappé and Neymar in the summer of 2017 to win them the Champions League. It wasn't an objective but an obligation, and Mbappé was just as driven to succeed as the club's Qatari owners. Indeed, in the run-up to the 2020 final against Bayern Munich, Mbappé admitted it would be a real reward if we could win the competition with the French side. That was my mission when I joined. Unfortunately for Mbappé, it has not been accomplished. PSG have of course always denied that they effectively made Mbappé their de facto sporting director when they went out of their way to convince him to stay at Parc des Princes in the summer of 2022. It was an understandable move. Any club would love the opportunity to construct a team around the best player in the world. But making such a significant investment in one man has hardly paid off. On the contrary, PSG are entitled to feel betrayed by Mbappé, who left on a free transfer after publicly flirting with Madrid for the past two years. Of course, PSG's problems are hardly all of Mbappé's making. They made several expensive mistakes in the transfer market before he was given a more prominent position at Parc des Princes. 
One also has to acknowledge that the goals have never stopped flowing, but the drama has been never ending too. He has repeatedly come across as a spoiled child, on and off the field, arguing with some teammates, giving up on others, and causing no end of controversy with his clumsy criticism of his coach's tactics. Mbappé has always been integral for the PSG brand, and his exit will hit them hard from a commercial perspective. But PSG's star attraction has long since become an unwelcome distraction. The situation has gone so bad and so unhealthy for both parties that Christophe Dugari admitted to RMC Sport that he hopes Mbappé leaves from the bottom of my heart because he feels that he is regressed as a player and as a person. The contract saga. The signing of Kylian Mbappé for Real Madrid began in 2017. At the time, the young Monaco talent was leaving for PSG on a loan with an option to buy worth 180 million euros. He first turned down Los Blancos with the intention of succeeding in Paris before making the permanent move. The second situation in this story comes four years after his arrival at PSG in 2021. Mbappé had one year left on his contract and from Madrid came the sirens calling. Florentino put 160 million euros on the table, which ended up being 200 million euros in the end. But PSG did not even consider listening to the offer. Second refusal from the Frenchman. Mbappé remained at PSG, aware that his contract had a deadline, the summer of 2022. From Madrid, despite the second refusal, they once again had their hopes of signing the long-awaited Galactico. The Frenchman rejects all the renewal offers that come from the club, and at the Bernabeu his arrival is a done deal. But then comes Kylian's third no. A few weeks later everything starts to go wrong and doubts appear again. In France there was a national movement never seen before for a footballer. Qatar, Macron, Paris and all those involved with PSG all went out of their way to convince the player to renew his contract. And against all odds, they succeeded. The figures were crazy. 83 million euros a year for three seasons and a bonus of 125 million euros if he renews. Mbappé renews with PSG until 2024 with the option to extend his contract for another season. Madrid, who had already been courting his signature, have once again come up short. The third refusal since his arrival in Paris, and then Mbappé renews his contract with PSG. Kylian says he's staying, and in doing so dashes the hopes of many Madrid fans who had already had illusions about the arrival of a player who was destined to take over from Cristiano Ronaldo. It all seemed to be a done deal, but no. The Mbappé case has never been completely closed. The season has not even ended when information began to leak out that he is not happy in Paris and that certain promises made to him by the club have not been fulfilled. Messi arrived but Pochettino was sacked after Tuchel and the arrival of Galtier didn't change the mood either. The instability at the club is not helping to convince Mbappé who has denied rumors of his departure and says he wants to stay at PSG. However, the mood in Paris is starting to heat up with the constant back and forth about his future, and the idea of selling him in the summer is starting to gain momentum. And then comes the definite boom, the letter. In July 2022, Kylian Mbappé informs PSG in writing that he will not renew his contract and that he will not remain at the club beyond 2024. With this message, the Frenchman makes a definitive statement about his intention to leave Paris and look for a new destination next summer as a free agent. al Khelaifi, however, has a very different idea. PSG are not willing to let him leave for free and are giving him an ultimatum. Either he renews his contract this summer or he leaves on a transfer and they have already set his starting price, 200 million euros. Real Madrid again moves for the yes after three doors slammed and presents 200 million euros offer. The Parisian club has the last word, but the deal fails. And then, in 2024, Mbappé moves to Real Madrid. Good morning everyone, I'm going to try to speak Spanish. Unsurprisingly, for a transfer that has been more than a decade in the making, Kylian Mbappé came prepared. It was at Monaco, the talented teenager has started taking Spanish lessons in anticipation of the moment. And now, finally, it had arrived. It's such an incredible feeling to be here, just incredible. Said Mbappé after he was eventually introduced at the PAX Santiago Bernabeu Stadium on Tuesday by Florentino Perez. More than 80,000 supporters were present. Tickets for the event were sold out two days in advance. Twelve years and lots of goals later, Mbappé could not hide his delight when he emerged from the tunnel at 12.58 local time, almost an hour after the ceremony had been due to start. Yet even a player who already won 84 caps for France and set the record for most goals scored in the World Cup Finals 
could not avoid feeling nervous. Of course there is pressure playing for the biggest club in the world, but there is also pleasure at playing at the most important club in the world. He said, I really struggled to sleep like this, to wake up with the best of myself, to enjoy every moment of